Okay, right now, just for interest's sake, I'm playing back with co-modulation. And uh, I'm playing back individually now. I've turned off some channel load for the playback. We can pick any two minute segment and play it back. Here we're simply observing whether the waxing, and the, now this is Richard and this is Judith, and this is from the session we just did. Now what we're simply looking for is, is there some relationship between the timing? Is there like a consistent and you can see the coma is saying absolutely there's a yeah. significant connection between the timing of these things in time. The synchrony was trying to determine whether each rise and fall of the wave is connected with each rise and fall on the other side. That's a very, very tall order. And what we saw with this technique. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's almost like moving back and forth about the same time. Mm -hmm. Visually, you see this tendency for the waxing and waning. There, for example. Yeah. Right there. Even though the, 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 the spindles have different shape and time course, the co-modulation is way, it's up in the 95-96% range. So this really, um, I think, emphasizes the criticality of what exactly you choose to do and measure. Uh, if, like Les, Femi, you endeavor to really phase lock, the playback is done, to phase lock the alpha waves, that's a very, very tall order. And over a 20 minute period of time, we found statistically with a very sensitive measure that uh, there was not a statistically significant binding between the uh, wavelets. And again, um, I would be extremely surprised if we saw it. And you know, if, if we had seen something you know, large, I would have questioned it because you know, this is brain physiology. But somehow the the occurrence of the alpha bursts themselves, the wavelets, the packets, did visually, we do tend to see that there's some correlation over longer stretches of time going in and out of state. First, I think Tom has a quick one. Can you undo some of the screen with the modulation? Um, if I played back all the minutes, I could, yeah. And we could see the difference. You're not going to get much on it. You're not going to get much on two minutes, but I don't want to do it right now. We don't really have time to do it. The answer is yes. The answer is absolutely yes. You can play these things back and recover different metrics. Absolutely. So it just keeps the signal. Yeah, it stores the EEG and then you can replay it back as if it was original. Yeah, I mean, do you think that there had been a better possibility of synchrony had I had my wife Jean and she yeah. was sitting here with Joel? I do. Yeah. yeah, the question was if these were people who had our, our life partners. Uh, certainly, I think that's what uh, Les experiences. Uh, it's not at all a trivial thing to, uh, to do that. And uh, when you do it, I think we probably are only looking for those tiny little, little shards, those little tiny amounts of synchrony that sneak in to, uh, it's, I mean, to wax poetical, you know, it's like the spice, the, the little bit of salt that livens up. <laughs> that shared experience. Uh, when you do get a, all you need is a little tiny bit of it, and that it's a miracle when it does happen, when you think about what it means. That a population of neurons in one brain and a population of neurons in another brain are tightly uh, time connected. It's a lot uh, you know, I easier. To yes. Mm -hmm. There you go. With the healing, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the direction you can take it. So um, I think we'll just take a handful more questions and then we'll let people go out and enjoy the bit of sunshine that's left. Um, I'll just summarize what we've tried to do is you know demonstrate techniques. 
put them in a broad clinical context and just show you some, some tools and methods which are kind of about, we put in a toolkit for working with uh, individuals. You see that some of the metrics are very forgiving. Um, uh, they reveal similarities, broad similarities. Spectral correlation reveals a broad similarity in the overall shape. Comodulation reveals a similarity in the time functioning. Uh, if you're trying to get synchrony, then uh, you're looking to correlate very fast phenomena. And we, I think it's reassuring to see that when we look for it, the instrumentation all worked nicely. All the numbers came out where you expect. And we saw that there was, if anything, just tiny little uh, times when there was synchrony, and there were other times when there was less. So if you, were, if you employ a tool like this, and for example, all you do would consistently see channel one larger than channel two if uh, over a bit. I've seen this in couples uh, for about five straight minutes. Channel one was just that much greater than channel two, but it was greater. And it was minute after minute after minute after minute. That indicates a sustained amount of just a teeny weeny bit of synchrony, but that's enough to look for in this kind of work. Why did you want to give us your wrap? No, I'm, <clears throat> well, the wrap is that uh, this, is a, this is a therapy or a training that can be used in conjunction with couples therapy. And it can be used um, in, a, in a, a different form uh, for, for teams. You couldn't do it on a brain master today, but you maybe even in the future. But, but you can do you can, four. Yeah, four channels. You can do four people. You can do four people, and uh, that's something to think of when you've got three partners, or four partners in a firm, who uh, and you're doing some team building. So, and these are done. This is done as a as a training, and you do it as part of the coaching or, or therapeutic intervention that you're you're up for. Not necessarily during the session. Although um, uh, you can use visualization and other things during the session to intensify the experience. Uh, since these presumably are going to be people who came from different parts of the strangers at the beginning of the how would how would you gauge when you feel that they're ready to you know they would not be friends or they wouldn't be anything you know, so. It's, it's, you're not just asking a revelation about themselves. You're asking about a revelation about the relationship, which is something that people are going to be even more protected I think that's than a, they would be of an individual. That's, a, that's an excellent. That is. That's an excellent question. Here's here it is. It's the system. If you're if you're systemically trained or systemically aware. You mean, it's going to become a matter of clinical judgment that these people have, the system has begun to move in some direction that would warrant taking them to this step. If the system is still dysfunctional, if it's still more signal to noise, or noise to signal, pardon me, then, then you think that it's comfortable. You don't want to send them there yet to this particular so you really want to get them moving before you put them in this chair so that you get some results. Otherwise, it's going to, it's going to be like uh, herding cats. What are you looking for? Um, the outcome that you're looking for, statistically, is what uh, Tom has mentioned. But what you're looking for on the ground is a much more functional system of interaction that handles, that dances. It dances with conflict, dances with difference.